Hey guys, BladeWolf88. Yes, I'm back, and I know I've been a horrible, horrible, horrible YouTuber. I've not uploaded any content, I've not kept in touch with people, it's not been good. But, I wanted to say that I'm back, kind of, and I will be releasing content again. But, there's going to be a few changes. Um, I'm not going to be posting as regularly, it's going to be a lot more... Um, as and when I, f I feel like it, which I know sounds really petty, like, uh, I may upload as and when I want to, but it's going to be mainly so that the content doesn't dry up, so that you don't end up with fake reactions to things, or just really monotonous gameplay, um, because basically the part of the reason I stopped is while I was recording videos to upload, I was looking at them, and they were crap. It, it is the honest answer, they were really crap, and I mean... Even crap by my standards, which is really, really low. <laughs> but um, the, the, the quality wasn't there, the enthusiasm wasn't there, and I didn't want to insult you guys by uploading it, because it was just bollocks. So I decided to take a step back, take some time for me. Obviously, my PC blowing up as well really didn't help, but what can you do? But I am back, and I will be uploading content, and today's content is just going to be me showing off. Because, you know, who doesn't like to show off a little bit every once in a while? And what I will be showing off is Seven Days to Die. I've logged into game. This is a game I've been playing with my friend Lummies, who you may remember from some of my Black Ops content. Um, and what we what we did was we, we decided to start a new server because they added the new Alpha 16 update, which includes um, all kinds of craziness, which I will show you now. But we're going to pop into creative mode so that I can fly around, so that makes it a bit easier. And I'm going to sneak down into the floor and show you where it's all started. So, if you weren't aware, the object of the game in Seven Days to Die is it's a survival game. And we started off in this little, tiny little cave here. It doesn't look like much, but it, it served its purpose. And we basically had this little cave, and it used to come out here. I'll put the flashlight on so you can see. And it came out into this open expanse like a quarry. We filled it in now and covered it with concrete, but it used to be connected. And that was where we lived, and we managed to convert that, time over time over time, into... Well, I'll probably best just show you, that'd be easier. So, this... Ooh, phase through that. This is what we've made, and just to clarify, just to give a little disclaimer, this is all in normal mode, in survival mode. No creative, no spawning anything in. This is literally, uh... Yeah, well, I don't really have words for it, I mean... If it does lag, I'm really sorry. Um, there is a lot to load, as you can see. Um, but this is this is the base. This is what we made, and I'm now going to give you a nice little tour. So if we come down here, you'll see we've got lights running all around the edge so that we have the ability to see the zombies as they're spawning without having to rely too heavily on flashlights. We've then got several rows of these bog-standard wood spikes, which I can see has already claimed a victim. Let's see what he's got. Delicious sandwich. Ooh, that'll always be tasty. But, so we've got this, they, they climb through here, a lot of them don't make it through, as you can see, they tend to die on the first lot, so I'll grab that as well. Nice bit of chilli, what's this guy got? Nothing. Ungrateful bastard. But yeah, so they, they would have to break through these rows of spikes before falling down a cliff and hitting more spikes. So just so you know, spikes are a theme. You know, that, that you may get that as, as you look at the base. They then have to climb up this little precipice and, lo and behold, more spikes. More lighting at this level here, so that we can see them as they're reaching the second stage. But you'll also notice this little thing right here. This is a new addition. This is part of the Alpha 16 update. These are automated shotgun turrets. And they are fantastic. You know, I have 22 of these just on this little um, U section going around the edge there. All pointed facing outward to cover every avenue of attack. And... They are insane. You know, they will auto-target enemies and they will shoot them for you once activated, once there's power run to them. All you ever need to do is ensure that they are linked to uh, a main power supply, and you usually do that via these electrical wire relays. But say they get past our shotguns, say they're like tough sons of bitches, they get past our shotguns, they then have to wade through even more spikes before we get to what we've commonly referred to as fidget spinners. You know, except these are the kind that you'd want people to use because they'd cut their own fingers off and then never use fidget spinners again. But we have these, and I think, if I remember rightly, there's something like 94 in total. We've got this ring here, which actually goes all the way around the back of the base as well, which I'll show you in a moment. And this inner, like, U-shape here, as well as a sneaky little bit down there. So as I say, the objective of the game is you create a base, 
you have to survive and every seven days you'll be attacked by a zombie horde which will come in they'll try and kill you and on the seventh day we stand up here and we have all of our defenses up and so the zombies have to try and get to us so on the worst case scenario if they like get onto our base they fall down here they get chopped they get spiked or lo and behold oh look more lovely shotguns so we got all of these bad boys all along here ready to wreck anybody that gets close enough I think in total I've got something like 30 odd shotguns, uh, including all the ones around the base. So it's, the object of the game is just about survival and creating stupidly large bases. So you've seen the spikes, you've seen the spinners, you've seen our little shotguns. On the main platform here we also have auto turrets. So these, these are linked up to a switch so I can turn these on and off. And these are basically SMG turrets, so they are basically bullet hoses, they're amazing. And what you can do, which is I didn't know about until very recently, is you can click the, click that little camera preview. You can adjust where it's aiming, but also you can fire them as well. So it means that I have the ability to sit in here like a little pillbox and pick enemies off without having to worry about them hitting me or the spitter zombie spitting at me. So it's nice and enclosed. But what I will do is I will go along now and show you around the back of the base because what we made sure to do is we actually dug all of this back. The original line for the base was actually over there, right in the distance there, and it used to curl round and back over to that side. It was all completely covered, so we shaved the entire mountain back and even dug into the sides here to create a completely safe little island, if you will. Uh, we even popped in a couple of shotgun turrets on these little side corners here so that if the zombies fall down the back there and try to come through to us to get to the tower, they get wrecked by these little sneaky buggers. And a good thing is they can shoot through these uh, iron railings and bits like that so you don't have to worry about the zombies getting in and breaking your shotgun. But what we'll do is we will head up top now. I'll give you a little zoom up and you can see all around the back there. Again, more spikes. Recurring theme, I know. Very subtle. But then we're on to up the next piece of really cool tech that they added in the alpha update and it's these security cameras and they are fantastic and I mean they really remind me of the uh, the Metal Gear Solid ones from the PS1 game every time I see them I can't help but think surveillance camera just because they look so similar so what they'll do is they will track enemies zombies enemy players friends and me you can you can activate them and you can change their settings and you can uh, have a little look so you can set what they target. So at the moment he said target me and I've wired it up so that what will happen is when I'm targeted it will light up one of these lights over here so I can see at a glance where zombies are coming from. So say I'm on here on the seventh day the zombie horde is about to spawn. I can then see which direction they're gonna come from because I mean I can see all around me here I've got a full 180 this side but I can't see anything there because my base is in the way. So I put these in. there. All around here, these little uh, light points around the back here all have cameras on them so that they can be seen for miles. It's absolutely brilliant. So we'll head into the base now. We have obviously completely disconnected it from the rest of the landmass so that zombies cannot just walk on top of the base. It's accessed via one of these awesome drawbridges, which are just a really cool addition. I'm kind of hoping that there's a way of either upgrading them or maybe even making them uh, run off of an electric switch. That would be very fancy. We then have our garage, which also introduces us to one of the other new items in the alpha update, which is battery banks. You can put batteries in these and they will generate power. The only downside is, is that while they're active and while something is using power from this battery bank, these batteries will start to drain down. And so they've also added a very, very clever way of getting around that. So what you would do, if you have the uh, Duke's coins available to you, is you would purchase these which are solar banks they will basically for the entire like daylight hours they will generate energy they will recharge those batteries for you the more solar cells you have or and the better quality of solar cell the more power will be generated so you can see this side is only generating about 115 watts of output uh, whereas this side has about 136 because it has better solar panels even though they both have six in there but the only thing about those is they are very expensive. For one solar cell by itself, you're looking at between 14 and 20,000 coins, which is just insane, if I'm completely honest. Um, but that's, that's more of the power. But as you can see up here, I have further defenses. We've got shotgun turret aimed here, shotgun turret aimed there, just to pick off the ones that may try to climb along the sides. 
Um, I've also done the same on this side, and you'll notice I did sneakily crawl past this little bad boy here. These are the other way of generating power. Oh. And you'll see there, that is uh, automated turret, which I left on by mistake, picking off a vulture. So we'll turn that off before I waste too much ammo, because in this game, ammo is very fucking expensive to make. It takes a long time to make effectively. But anyway, so generators. These are powered with fuel. This one is actually empty, so we'll have to top that up at some point. I'll pop down and get some fuel in a minute. And what these do is you put small engines in, which you get from dismantling cars, and you fuel them with gas, and they will generate power for you. And on this one, I have the shotgun turrets over there powered, uh, the shotgun over here, and what we've also done up in my little tower here, which I'm, I'm going to take the scenic route through the main stairwell, just because I think it looks cool. So you come in here, up to the top of the stairs, and we have shotgun turrets. And the way these are set up as well is, once again, when they are powered, you can activate them, click the camera preview, and you can control them like a turret, so like a manual turret. But they will continue to fire on their own if you're not using that camera mode. But that then brings us... we still alive. There's another one. That's the only problem with staying in the zone, is that a lot of the new... Um, the new creatures that they've added in Alpha are absolutely fantastic. You've got vultures, you've got dire wolves, zombie bears, irradiated zombies, feral zombies, whites, all kind of craziness. But as you can see, I've even got the lights down here, and they are picking up on that zombie that's outside, showing that he is on the left cliff. So you can see a lot clearer with the light off, but that just gives you an idea of where these zombies are. So when you're leaving the base, you don't have to worry about being jumped as you set foot out the door. But this, this is the main base. This is the hub. This is where all the magic happens. And I'm going to pop the light on so we can see. And this is it. This is what we're looking at. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. It's a little bit laggy for some reason with this amount of light creating so many shadows going in different directions. But that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Obviously, it's still alpha at this point, so it's still a, a little bit tentative. This is my little room, which my friend Lemons decided to put a fancy toilet in there for me because apparently I'm shit. So, he's nice like that. He's, he's a great guy. Finish, you know, you don't trust him. But, this is the base. This is the basics of it. We've got all of our, like, supplies. Um, I didn't even know until recently you actually had um, signboards you could put up. So, before now, I was having to rely on people looking at the little symbols on there to guess what was in each box. But now I can mark them up properly, which is a lot easier. I'm just going to turn that off. We're going to grab some gas because I need to top that thing up upstairs. Through here is something that we added more recently. This was more of a joke than anything, because both Lemons and I don't really do the whole design over function thing. We tend to go very much case of, if it functions, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's all about, like, as long as it works, it's good. So we decided to put in these stupid little rooms, which have no real purpose at all, um, other than just because they're stupid. So we have, like, a toilet, a stupid washroom, and the bro pad which we have in here, and we have like bulletproof glass so we can look out over the zombies getting wrecked outside. And I, I think one or two pieces were, were added in because we couldn't create them manually. Um, just, we don't actually use this room, this is purely to walk in and look stupid. Um, but that's about it, so that's why we have the, the weird looking doors and stuff like that. But those are probably the only items that were actually brought into the game, only because we couldn't make them ourselves, even though we wanted to. We tried looking at using the new paintbrush mechanic to, to paint the walls, which is what we've done to the floor and the ceiling here. But it doesn't really make that much difference. As you come out into the main hallway here, you'll notice we have even more craziness. We've got loads more switches. These all power the different aspects of the base. So you've got the upper level shotguns, you've got the rear level spinners, which I'm going to fire up now, the rear right spinners, lower front shotguns, low left, uh, sorry, front left and front right. And as you can see, this makes quite a ruckus, and this is what you get. Just absolute nutcase spinniness. These bad boys will chop limbs, heads, that they, they don't discriminate, they're completely fair, they will hack up anything that is stupid enough to get in close. And I absolutely love it. It's hilarious. Oh, should we switch that off? Yeah, that's why I was out of gas, because I left the bloody light on. But look, once again, left cliffside, there is a zombie. So that means, there's yeah, there's someone over there. It works, you know? I mean, I don't, I've not seen many other people that play this game actually um, use those in that way. I know that a lot of people just use the motion sensors, combine them with the shotgun parts to make the turrets. But I found it to be really effective, you know, like a really good way of um, 
it's kind of kooky, I guess, but it, it just gives a better way of doing things for me, so I can see exactly where everything is. This room is Aaron's work in progress, or Wizit. You may have seen me do some content with him before. I think it was a, a space shooter game that I did. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking a year back now, so we're really going back some. But I kind of nicked a corner of his uh, little construction because I needed to get up here and run cabling and sort of run the generators and that. So all this cabling here is for the cameras. Just all of this is an absolute shit show, but it works. We head down the bottom here. This is where you can get access to the shotguns for the tower. As you can see, they're all here chilling. Sometimes they do shoot the floor a bit, so be prepared to uh, like repair bits as and when. More generators, as you can hear, loads of them. And me, being the stupid bastard that I am, decided to put our water source in there, right next to generators, because I'm a smart cookie. But this is it. In here is our main water source. What I do is I have loads of buckets of water, which I bring up, put them in here, and then I can top up my water without needing to leave the base. So, like, it means that I don't have to worry about being attacked by zombies at night if I need water at night time. It just makes things a lot easier. And because my friend's finished, I decided to turn it into a nice erotic sauna for him because... Well, you know what the Finns are like in their saunas, but typical Finn fashion, he was incredibly ungrateful. So, you know, what can you do? But that is the basics of the base. Um, there's not really much else to show you. A lot of it is all relatively enclosed. Um, this door is literally leads to nothing. Now, this used to be the old entrance to the base. It used to go through solid rock and then up to the surface there, but we don't use that anymore. But this, this is what we're working with. This is the setup that I've used. Um, and I know a lot of people tend to go for smaller bases just because it's easier to maintain. But I find that... If you have a small base and then you end up having to expand later because you run out of room, then it really fucks with your design. Whereas if you initially start larger, yes, it takes a bit longer, but it means that you are protected. It means that you don't have to worry about getting absolutely wrecked by something later. So let's just fill this back. I mean, if you have any tips, tricks, or suggestions for things that I could change, or any other suggestions from there, please do let me know. Um... I guess there's only one other thing that I could really show you, and that's down the bottom of our little tunnel here. And what I did was I just created a, a little pathway. That, that one leads down to our mine. We don't really tend to use that much anymore because we have so many resources. But you go along this lovely little tunnel here, and this leads up to... Well, you can pop out the top of this little hatch, and you're inside the spike line. I use this so I can repair the turrets. Uh, relay the spikes, and also if I need to like repair any of the spinners if they've broken through. It just means that I can still pop up inside the base, but be protected. It's a lot easier that way. And this door leads back out to our old base. Uh, I still kept it accessible, just in case we need to go back there. And also, because conveniently, well, conveniently there is a um, little shotgun uh, cabinet in here, which I think every five or six days replenishes, so I kept it. And it's, at the moment it's empty because I've already looted it, but it means I can get some free shotgun parts every couple of days, which is always nice, or various other gun pieces. But that's basically it. There's not really any more to show you here. Everything uh, that I have done so far is on the base. At the moment I am still tweaking the design, seeing what things I can improve, what things work and what things don't. But I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet into Seven Days to Die. As I say, if you've got any suggestions you want to make, any comments, any feedback, feel free to chuck it in the comments or find me on Steam or whatever you fancy. Uh, and again, I will be trying to release more regular content um, and I appreciate you guys stopping in to check it out. Anyways, that's all for now. I'll see you guys later.